Shane's always been kind of a bitch. Hey guys, what's <laughs> up? Uh, welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. I'm Bernie. I'm uh, I'm Miles. That was a weird order, wasn't it? I'm Gavin. I'm Barbara. Barbara could have done it, but she didn't do it. And I gave, our, I gave pause just in case. Our sponsors for tonight are Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Jersey Mike's mm-hmm. and Me Undies. Mm-hmm. More we actually about got them Jersey Mike's. Yeah, yeah, listen, I'm finally. so excited about that because I almost tweeted. That's legit. Yeah, Jersey Mike's is always tweeting at us with fanfare stuff, and uh, I was wondering. I wonder if we'll ever get Jersey Mike's as a sponsor for any of our stuff. Sure enough, come in today. You know, they sent in a onesie for Michael and Lindsay's baby for Aww. Iris. Really? Yeah, they sent in a little. It said like mini sub on it, and it had like a little Jersey I don't Mike's support logo. Cannibalism. That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Babies are delicious, though. They look delicious. I've it's always, very tender. I've always said that. All right, speaking of stuff on Twitter, that aggravates me. Not that Jersey Mike aggravates me, but <laughs> I, had to, I had to talk to Tyler about this. Tyler, somebody wrote to me, um, they watched the RTAA about my friends in college who I knew who uh, dog-napped Texas A&M's mascot. And they thought it was just a made-up story. And then they looked it up and they saw this article from... I don't know, it was from My Aggie Nation, which I guess is traditions in Texas A&M. And one of the things it mentioned was that Reveille was dognapped in 1993, and then specifically mentioned the felony charges that they were threatening, the university was threatening my friends with at the time, which freaked them the fuck out, you know, because they're college kids, you level a felony at them, they're going to ruin their careers and their lives. Well, how long was it for? Like, wasn't it like two to ten years or something like that? Yeah, it was uh, because Reveille was... uh, Reveille's the name of the AM mascot. It's a collie, a border collie, right? Well, yeah. If anybody is not familiar with Texas AM, like it's uh it's a good school. Like it's a good school if you can get past the fact that it looks like 1980s Moscow on campus, that <laughs> the best restaurant they have in town is the Dixie Chicken. <laughs> and uh what else is great? That's oh, like I had, really I had a good friend. <laughs> I had a friend once say that if the be. world was to have an enema, the host would be attached in college <laughs> station. Now <laughs> it's uh, when, when we're talking about this dog specifically, <laughs> this dog um, is the head of the Corps of Cadets at Texas A&M. That's kind of weird. Which uh, is that? She, um, 13 or 12? I can't see the number. The third. So that dog it looks like the third, is that's bred from oil incest. <laughs> Did you know that, Bernie? It's what? It's bred from incest. Like All right, do... we're going down a trail no, 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 here no, with I'm not A&M. even making fun. Like, that's yeah. a true story. Like, it's inbreeding. Like, that's... Dog number, you know, eight, same, you know, just brothers and sisters. Oh, well, they were not throwing, like, full shade at Texas A&M University. Right. They were our biggest rivals. Well, our biggest rivals, Oklahoma. But A&M, we were their biggest rival, <laughs> right, for Correct. years and years. Then they left our conference, went to the SEC. I remember when they did that, I was like, good luck. You guys are going to get hammered. And they still are, yeah. Well, but they can. Well, like, their first year, especially in the SEC, they did really well. Yeah, we Johnny Menzel and that whole thing. So, yeah, yeah, we don't really play them anymore as a result, which kind of sucks. You know, because in, uh, in in their fight song, it references the University of Texas. Oh, the, the whole thing is like, you know, with all due respect to AM, it's a great school, but it's the it's the world's worst case of penis envy. I mean, the whole song is about beating Texas. They go to a place called Fish Camp, which they they get brainwashed, you know. Uh, I mean, this and the thing with the dog is crazy. Like everything in Texas AM is a tradition. So like when the dog comes into class, and barks. Wait, why the fuck does the dog come demi- into class? Because Miles, the person on, takes care with, this is of the dog. Logic, it is okay? like a revered position okay. in the Corps of Cadets, whoever's the keeper of Reveille. It goes dog, everywhere yeah. you with that person. can use that as part of like, hey, I pick up that dog shit on the weekend. Here's my number. <laughs> Listen, yes. <laughs> no! Probably, probably. Yes. No. I mean, absolutely. No. There, there's one where if the dog uh, in, the, in the barracks, if it jumps into bed with you, you have to sleep fuck on it. the ground. Oh, sorry. This is the thing. If the dog barks, they have to dismiss class. Yes. That's a tradition. Fuck you you no. have to leave. Yeah. No, true story. True. That's true. I, oh. That sounds like a really great way to get just, everyone in the room to antagonize a poor dog. Yeah, rile it up, man. <laughs> Which, Texas A&M is an institution that is very storied in tradition. Yeah. They value tradition. One of the fucking traditions they have is stealing our mascot. The Bevo is named Bevo because A&M students stole Bevo. They branded the entire side of the cow. The entire side with the score of the last game, which is 13 to 0. And supposedly, uh, the legend goes, university students took the 13 to 0, dash 13 dash 0, and reworked that into the word Bevo. And that's well, where the mascot the guy, got its name. Well, Aggies have always been good at screwing things up. So, like, they <laughs> fucked up the. Little <laughs> Bevo, there he is. Such a sad mascot. I so, basically, America is such so, a weird country. <laughs> so I don't drugged up. Understand. So, what they did was uh, it was 13 to 0, so 13 v 0, but they put the 1 and the 3 too close together. Uh, so, yeah, it was yeah. BVO. BVO. 
Bebo. Mm. So their screw up led to the most recognizable mascot and most profitable <laughs> mascot. Uh, Tyler, you're going to give people the impression you don't like AM. No, you know, they're fun. Like, you have to have the bad to enjoy the good, uh-huh. and they're just goofy little people. They're a lot of fun. Can I just point out that it looks like Tyler's giving a TED Talk right now? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about so Getting Texas swole. A&M. Or is it flash done? They're good people, though, really. They're, so they're great. I got fired up, though, because these guys I knew in college, they dog-napped Reveille. It was very funny, but then the university went funny. into panic mode after they had bragged for years. Constantly that our mascot has never been stolen. I think they even said theirs was the only NCAA mascot that had never been stolen. That is asking for it. Yeah, no, no, come on. They're just butthurt. And it, it's a, to threaten kids with like felony a charges. felony. That's that's ridiculous. I mean, they weren't harming the dog. If they had done something to the dog, that's a different story. But just kidnapping the dog, and let's let's be honest here, they did the dog a favor. If that dog was to be anywhere in the world, would it rather be in College Station or the number one dog city in the country in Austin? It can go everywhere, go down to the lake, Lake Travis. Martin Springs. We got dog restaurants. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think they have those yet what? in College Station. We have dog restaurants? Yeah. Not in 1993, we did. There's a restaurant it's called Yard, uh, Yard Barker on Burnett Road where you can take your dog. They have yeah. little dog ice cream. Like, it's a ton of fun. <laughs> can, can All right, well, now you're making no, us sound rules. stupid. No, now no, you're making no, us sound no, like no. idiots. This place rules. It's like, hey, do you have a dog that you just either want or need to have with you all the time, but you also want to go out and be a social alcohol drinking fun person? Come to Yard Bar, oh. where we have a little pen for the dogs can do their thing. Give them a little ice cream, shut them up, and have your drink. It's cool. I like Yard Bar. It's great. Go there. Yeah. But at the end of the day, stealing college mascots has been happening for years, decades, and it's happened multiple times. A and M students stealing the University of Texas mascot. Leveling those felony charges was, uh, I thought, a super low class move. And I think I thought it actually put their dog in danger because I know it sent those guys into a panic mode. They didn't know how to give the dog back. Well, how anymore. are you going to give the dog back? You turn over the dog, they're going to know it was you yeah. and slap some cuffs on you. I mean, I don't know what you. It's, it's just. No, you know what they did? They had a tie to a tree like Travis that called a radio show. <laughs> yeah. I believe it was a sports talk radio show. Yeah. And then they were hiding, watching to make sure the dog was okay. So that somebody came and got the dog. Because it, if they called and somebody thought it was a prank, the dog's fucking tied to a tree out of Lake Travis. How close do you Get think they came? Get one of those amoebas in the nose. Who knows what could happen at that How point? close do you think they came to just hitting it with a shovel and burying it? Dude, Jesus I, said, Christ. I can tell I you they never the came head. close what to that. The, what? Why would, never, why would your first idea not just be like, let it go? The dog's not going to snitch on you, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's like a million That's places you could take you a dog. too much, dog. You could take the it to a shelter him and then somebody else's house. It'll Leave it on the courtroom make steps, you know? Sniffing actions at them in a lineup. <laughs> <laughs> it might. Maybe you could just Dogs say are you, smart. you like me or something. Or put treats in oh the other god. suspect's pockets. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a lot, Remember, of ways, a lot of ways to go about it. There's a this lineup and they're like, who, who did it, girl? Who did it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, class dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Investigation's over, the dog bark. Here's all I'm saying this 1993, if memory serves, and this is now going to be the 25th anniversary of when that happened next year, next December. I I think Texas A&M University and the Corps of Cadets should issue a formal apology for overreacting and trying to scare college kids with a potential felony charge for doing something that they had done multiple times. Yeah, so whatever. Well, Anyways, Tyler, I enjoyed your TED school. Talk. Yeah, so appreciate it. Hey, Tyler. Yeah. You're looking real good in that tank, bro. Thanks. I'm going to go hit the gym. I'm out of here. All right, bye. Are you really? Take you don't want to check the gym from here? Yeah. Meanwhile, we're going to sit here and talk Gosh, for an hour and a half I, and drink I, beer. I can't think of the last time I went to the gym. I think it's been a fortnight. Is that how Gus does it? Is that how he segues <laughs> into our ad reads? Because I got an ad read. I'm gonna no, that's not at all how Gus does it. Yeah, that, was that was more of a Lauren Sontag one. Hey, <laughs> this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Fortnite. Fortnite is an action-building online game that includes elements of co-op RPG. It also allows players with vastly different gameplay styles to team up. Whether they like shooters, survival games, building, or support, players can have a great experience together. Fortnite is now available in paid early access on PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Mac with open free access in 2018. Find out more at Fortnite.com. That's Fortnite.com. And be sure to check out some of the Let's Plays we've done in the game from Achievement Hunter, Funhouse, and us. And the RT Podcasts, let's play. Suck it, Gus. That was way <laughs> better was than very Gus. Very good. No, you did way better than Gus. <laughs> also, a better segue. Even I'm pretty sure I broke into the mic during. That's fun. So, uh, Fortnite as a term mm-hmm. in America, yes. not widely used, I found out. What no. does it mean? Nor is means, thrice. Correct two me weeks. if I'm wrong. It two means two weeks. Two weeks. Right? Yeah. Supposedly it comes from the term 14 nights. No. I would that believe that. Yeah. Fortnite. Just like it was like the LOL of old English. Yeah, you just want to shorten that shit. No one had time for fourteen nights. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Use Fortnite in the UK. Ever? Yeah, you do. I mean, I didn't really. We'll do it in a fortnight. 
I, I heard it often. How often in your life are you making reference to doing something in two weeks from now? Yeah, right? Mm. Well, you know, it is helpful because there is always that debate about we're recording this podcast on a Monday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if we're going to do something uh, Monday, whatever, Monday, August 4th, 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 4th 5th, or 6th? Yep, that's the one. If we're going to do something that Monday, 7th. do you call that next Monday or do you call that Monday? Hey, Barb, let's go out for drinks Monday or next Monday? If it's... Today is Monday, so I would say next Monday. You would, would say, say next Monday. If it yeah. was, if it was like tomorrow, I would say Monday. And once it, the day has passed, that's when you could start. Saying see, it's that confusing day. though, right? Yeah. I fuck it up all the time. I'm constantly saying next Monday or next whatever, just because in my mind it's next... literally the next one. We, and yeah. I would say you want to do it Monday, you go or next Monday. See, to me, it's like the the well, coming know, Monday is Monday. I it would work it if it was Monday. Literally means today. the next Monday. No, I don't think so. I yeah. think it does. So if I said, hey, let's do something next Tuesday, do you think I mean tomorrow? No. I would think you mean next week. Yeah. Damn it. There we go, Gavin. Yeah, I feel like we had There's a weird blurred line. I think the day I, I has to pass it. before Off Topic it had sense. a big argument about this recently. Okay. Is that true? And I don't think we agreed on anything. <laughs> it has been in the last two and a half hours. No. It was no. mainly about context. this Monday. Next Monday. Oh, when you're like, let's do something. Hmm? Or like this week. Yeah. Or this like if weekend? I said, hey, Barb, let's go for drinks this Monday. <laughs> Today? <laughs> My brain just went, what? Yeah. I would think you mean a week from now. But because it, also, we are already on Monday. Yeah, this Monday. Yeah, if you were like, let's do it today, I'd be like, well, I know what that means. If you said, hey, do you want to go for drinks on Monday? I said, this Monday or next Monday? Then that means the coming one I'd be or the like, that's after. the same day. Yeah. But, but <laughs> at this, this point, Monday, I ask you for dates. This yeah. can also yeah, be in the past. Barbara out. That's what we're getting <laughs> at. Yeah. This, this can be in the past. But it? This can't be in the past. Yeah. No, yeah, you can't. It was this Tuesday. Yeah, when you refer to the Tuesday that just happened, the way you said it with the right. inflection, right? Yeah, no, right. I know. Still using the same words. I know, right? Like, when did that happen? Monday. This it happened this Monday. I see. I would say this last Monday. This last. I would never say this Monday. What about this past Monday? What, it's like when did it happen? It happened Monday. I wouldn't say it happened this Monday. I would. You would? I don't know if you would. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> no, I, I you. think you're wrong, uh, actually, I Barbara. Like I think you're more of a past Monday woman. <laughs> but if I said Monday fortnight. <laughs> well, we know we know exactly what that means. Have Did you ever you... heard of the phrase, uh, let's do it Monday week? No. no. I, Who we says we that? say a week from Monday in America. Okay. Is, that a, is, that a, is that a British thing? Yeah. Well, you know a week from Monday. Well, no, yeah. no, but Monday week? Yeah, it yeah. means. Yeah, exactly. So, what if someone thing. today said a week from Monday? Tuesday next. <laughs> what would it mean? I also get confused about a couple <laughs> is definitely two. A few oh. is, I think, is supposed to be three. three it gets, or more. it gets muddy. I fuck up a couple a lot. I'll say like, yeah, I got a couple of. Wait, what am I referring to? I got a couple of amiibos back at my place. I don't know why I'd ever say that, but like, I'm referring <laughs> I'm to like a handful of amiibos, not specifically two. I don't go hard I too. fuck it up. I fuck it up a lot. Yeah. Like, I know I'm wrong. Or like, I I'll see I'm in wrong. a couple days from now. That doesn't necessarily mean two. I'm just imagining Miles and the dude with the dog from A and M in a bar together. One guy's like, "I cleaned up the shit of the dog," and my, Miles there. I got a couple of amiibos back at my place. Well, yeah, I got the gold Mario. I got gold Mario. What do you think about that hot stuff? What would you think if I said, "Let's do something a month Monday"? A month I, Monday? Yeah. You had like a stroke or something? I, was saying, <laughs> I don't make okay? I don't make. I would. I would don't make plans at far in advance. It's 20, I, 20 days. I would say 28 days. To me, a week is uh, a month is four weeks, even though I know that's not right. That's just how I do the calculation in my head. And a month Tuesday is 21 days. Ugh. What? Is, just, no. just <laughs> it <up>. what you, <laughs> it's just like the, the British school system. <laughs> I was trying to see how far I could go with it. No, yeah, no, I don't believe, I don't believe you for a second. Yeah, but it gets confusing. And I think that's like one of the things about that's tough about learning uh, the English language is, is, all the contextual stuff, like even mm-hmm. Miles just saying it's slightly different. Yeah. I completely understood exactly what you were saying. Yeah. But you don't get that. You don't get inflection and tone and context when you're learning a language. Or in writing. Talking. Like if you tweet something or text Ooh, something. That, that's gotten me in trouble. I think it's gotten a lot of people in trouble when you text something or tweet something and you've got an inflection in your head, but it doesn't quite come I across. I have that with email constantly. Yeah. I'm always like, here's a cheeky sucky. Email and well, then, when and you then respond, two weeks later, someone's like, "That was such a rude, sucky email, sarky, like, <laughs> sarcastic." If you if you respond to an email that says "nah," I, like of course we're gonna take yeah. that as you being rude. In yeah. my head, it's like "nah." I do that all Which the time. I'd be like, "Yeah, fuck same you." Thing. That's <laughs> what, I see that all the time in emails. Yeah, nah. nah. It's like, yeah, you want to do this uh, thingy for thingy? I'm like, nah. Especially a big long explanation of why it's important. Everything is right back. Nah. <laughs> You guys are jerks. See, because, but I, because of that, I'm actually saying yes. I'm just being funny. And saying, well, you're being nah. funny. Gavin's actually just saying, nah. Yeah. No. 
Like, hey, we're yeah. gonna approve the new vacation policy for the whole company. It's gonna allow people to take as much vacation as they need. It'll improve morale and all this stuff. They send it to the executive management staff, and I try back, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. Who needs but that? in person, that would be funnier than just NAH in an email. Exactly, yeah. yeah. No, no, I agree with that. Because of that, I now use ex- <laughs> What, what happened? What's wrong with you? <laughs> it came right up. <laughs> you tried to drink it. Beer was like, nah. <laughs> hey, Miles, you want to pass me over? <laughs> yeah. I pass my hand over. So, um, don't get your because of that, because of my fear of constantly being um, misunderstood as being like upset or something, because I, I knew a person that they couldn't stand if I just responded with sure, because they were like, oh, it sounds super passive aggressive. Okay. I was like, oh no, I, like I mean, it's like yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. but they took it as sure. You have every to, time. So you either have so, to add the exclamation point or, or an, an emoji. LOL. Oh. See, oh, emojis too. But like, I, I don't even use lol as like, oh, that's funny. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I, I just, I'm like, I don't know. I personally, I think it's kind of stupid, lol. Just so it doesn't come across as personally, I think it's kind of stupid. Uh, like, see, I, for <laughs> me, I feel like the lol comes off as passive aggressive a lot. Ooh. LOL? People, yeah. Yeah, Why I feel like when you say that, do I no, write I LOL? Just, I'm just look, looking around the room in conversation. You LOL never use LOL. to me in that context is like you're smiling at me while you're insulting me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's like, like, like Ellie did to you on the Thursday podcast. <laughs> what she did to you? She was very properly tearing Gavin down. It was, it was oh, wonderful good. to watch. The, dude, so many people agreed with me. I was impressed. No, they did. They did. It was, it was, it was evenly split. What yeah. was she getting on you about? I, not to rehash. It was like, a, topics, it was like a British prize fight. They were both talking about etiquette. For mm. about 20 minutes, and it was one of the most entertaining discussions of etiquette Pretty that I've ever glorious. heard. glorious. Yeah, it was, it was a good, it was a good back and forth. You guys did like a one-on-one -on -one podcast, right? Mm. Yeah. How'd that go? Yeah. That yeah, went really well. Do you feel yeah, like, uh, like Got a like lot of positive feedback on too it. Too crowded now? Yes. Nah. Too much time. <laughs> <laughs> Way too much time. <laughs> nah. I know, Gavin, I know you, this, you know this story, but Miles, when, between the time I was divorced, uh -huh. and I met Ashley, mm -hmm. when I was dating in there, mm -hmm. one of the, my favorite things I heard was, a girl who over text didn't want to talk to me anymore. She and she said, "It's so hard to talk to you. I never know what you're thinking because you don't use emojis." Oh. That's yeah. literally what she said. Oh. She was dumb. I miss her. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she liked the emoji movie, <laughs> dude? <sighs> yeah, you, Bernie. I have a question. Yeah, I, How? Like, I know you. Yeah. And I feel like no matter what, even if your kids begged you to take them to the emoji movie, you still wouldn't do it. But you still, you went there. Their mom sabotaged me. That was oh. us at the emoji movie, crying. Emoji Their movie? mom sabotaged me because I, they're going on vacation. And so I was like, hey, I, I'd love to spend some time with the kids this weekend. She goes, she goes, she goes yeah, yeah, no problem. Because we have a real flexible thing where it's like, yeah. it's, if I know I'm not going to see him for a week, it's like, want to bank up my days with El Kiddos. And she's like, yeah, no problem. She didn't tell me oh, no. that she had bought them all ticket, like 10 kids tickets to go see the Emoji <gasps> Movie. 10 and then kids? Ashley took the bullet with me. We all we all went and saw the Emoji Movie. Suicide Pact Doesn't that thing have a 0% <laughs> on Rotten Tomatoes? It, it's so terrible. It's so freaking terrible. They, they wanted to license a clip from YouTube to use in that movie. I don't think I ever responded to them. Oh, no, I know exactly where they would have gone. But, uh, yeah, I guess I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> Good call. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of apps featured in the uh, movie as well. Yeah. And some of the lines are just so fucking bad. What is bad. it even about? A bunch so, of emojis come to life and then wreck shit? There's so much wrong with this movie. So TJ Miller, who is on one, was on one of the smartest shows on TV, mm -hmm. Silicon Valley. Great fucking show. And he plays such a great pivotal character in that show. And then he gets in this emoji movie and Deadpool and other stuff as well. <clears> but he specifically referenced when he quit... Silicon Valley that he, he doesn't want to do things like play the same character over and over again for six seven years He wants to parasail into the Cannes Film Festival Which he fucking did <laughs> for the emoji movie because that's I'm paraphrasing here from memory But he said that's what's next in funny like that's the next big thing in, in, in comedy it, Did he also say that women aren't funny? I don't know. I don't remember I that I could have sworn I saw an article I think with it's like every male comedian funny. says that at some point like tries to like make that point and Embarrasses themselves, but it's a Denny. I'm watching this. So TJ Miller's character is the meh Emoticon. Oh, he's like the main guy. Yeah, he's like oh, meh, TJ. which you could just sell too. It's like this the whole movie feels you can feel the pitch 
in the boardroom at Sony Animation where they're like, uh, yeah, let's make it about emojis and this won't be like a classic narrative, you know, just follow this guy. And what it's like, is the plot line though? So this guy, this meh icon, and the reason why he's probably the main character, oh, wow, God. 7%. See, there he is in the middle there, the meh icon, or emoji. Is that poop behind him? Yeah, that's Sir that's Patrick, Patrick Stewart. Stewart. Oh, oh yeah. good no. Yeah. Sir Patrick Stewart. I think James Corden plays High oh. Five too. The high five icon. Uh, they've got. Their, it's terrible the whole way around. Oh I'm not even talk about it anymore. It's really terrible. It's not ironically terrible. It's just terrible. It's it's really a bad movie. Can I make a guess as to what the moral of the story is? Go ahead. That you don't have to play the role that you're dealt. Yeah. I don't. Okay. Sure. I don't. That'd be my guess. <laughs> it could be. Like he doesn't want to be a man because he was all like, oh, I can be happy. And then they had a fucking. Well, that's why he gets in trouble is because he makes other faces besides man. There you go. Yeah. And then know. you know. What is the target audience for this movie? Oh, they, listen, the kids in the audience were entertained by it. They were- They, they don't were, give a fuck what they Yeah, watching. they don't give a shit what they watch. Yeah, no. God. I, I loved watching those, like, straight-to-video Disney movies that are terrible. I, as a kid, I was like, Fuck yeah, Return of Jafar! Iago's got two songs! Dude, every- like, I don't <laughs> remember- I don't Loved remember it. a bad Disney movie as a kid. I, like, the straight-to-DVD or VHS ones? I, okay, I didn't see a lot of sequels. Mm, I didn't see like mm, like Cinderella good. 2 or, or Little Mermaid not 2 not or whatever good. the fuck they had there. They're I don't know. Good. Pretty much everyone is like, and then the children of the last heroes learned the same lesson that their parents did. And it's never the same cast. Like they replaced Robin Williams oh, yeah. with uh, Homer Simpson. But he, come, but he came back in the back third in the, one yeah. for whatever reason. He was falling out with Disney for a while there. Well, he was super, because you know what they, what the whole drama with uh, Aladdin was with Robin Williams, right? Mm -mm. So Robin Williams was going to be in Hook. It was coming out around the same time, and he was Sir Robin Williams. Is he no, just Robin so. Williams. I'm oh, okay. just so Robin Williams. Whatever. Got it. Robin Williams is going to be. <laughs> I also thought, but then I reheard yeah. it. In Hook, very excited about that film. Very much wanted to promote that film. Disney's like, hey, but like, be the genie, and he apparently wanted agreed to it because he was assured that it was a, just a bit like side part. Yep. And he wasn't going to be like a huge part of the movie. It was Aladdin story. It was Jasmine's story, and the genie was just there for some like comedic effect. I think. He Took a rate well below what he normally takes you. I think he did that movie for like eight hundred thousand dollars, which yeah. for Robin Williams is you no, know. And for much. a movie, yeah, that big. I'll look yeah. it up and see what he actually took. So, um, but then him being Robin Williams, like he's in the booth and he goes off on his whole thing where he's gonna do a bunch of like pop references and funny voices because that's just who he is and what he'll do in front of a, a hot mic. And the directors and writers went, "Fucking keep that take, keep that take, keep yeah, that take. We'll, we'll animate a bunch of bits. We'll, like we'll add it all in because it's yeah. really, really funny." And it was like marketed around the genius yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah, and then it came out, and and Robin Williams was pissed. Sorry, it was way off. In gratitude for his success with Touchstone Pictures' Good Morning Vietnam, Robin Williams voiced the genie for SAG scale pay of seventy five thousand mm. dollars versus. His normal asking fee, which at the time was eight million dollars, <laughs> and I think what? One of, I think one of the stipulations oh, he made was that they couldn't market the movie around him exclusively, and that's all they did yeah. was they marketed yeah. him, and then they put him on merchandise and everything else. Yeah. And he didn't sue him. He's got the best song too. I think in his will it specifically says he, that uh, no one else can take over the role from him or something. He has uh, in his will something about the movie Aladdin. It was not a, a good experience. So they, they, I was about to say, ain't, you ain't got a friend in me, and I was like, <laughs> you're, you're, you're blending together too. Yeah. I just watched Toy Story, so. <sighs> he was great in Aladdin. He's so good. Yeah. All those musical bits. You know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see, uh, <laughs> you never see classic <laughs> cosplay? Like, I'd love to see Jessica Negri do, like, Genie from I Dream of Genie or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, right? She would make a great one. She would. Yeah. It's like, I wonder why you don't see that stuff. I guess because it's like the context, a lot of people might not get it. Oh, yeah. Just, kids, Jessica yeah. Negri could make anything look great. She could it's be true. Alf. And be like, yo, I eat cats! And everyone would love it because I she's fucking great now. at what she does. So talented. Oh. Which, which one's the puppet with the bin lid on its head? The puppet? Oscar? Oscar the Grouch? Yeah. You think that could look good? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> which one's the puppet with the bin on its head? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you he got lives. it, didn't you? Yeah, that was true. You, you got it. He lives in the bin. Yeah, yeah but it's he, always on his head, though, isn't it? Well, he pops out, and it's like it's this door to his house, so... Yeah. I don't feel like he always like has it on his head. It's a trap like door. Well, he's in a garbage can, so when he comes up, the lid's on his head. What was not accurate about my description? Listen, I we totally got it. Because <laughs> totally it's like it. I don't think of them as puppets. You're just like, trouncing on our childhood characters. traditions. Uh, you know they're not real. It's a puppet. Don't don't ruin this for her. Don't ruin this for her. <laughs> what makes a puppet a muppet? <laughs> uh, Jim Henson. I think. Is that what it is? A TM think. at the end of the word muppet. <laughs> is that what it is? It's a muppet. Is just they just use want, the word muppet. I want to look this up now. Difference between a puppet. Could that be the title of this podcast? What makes a puppet a muppet? That sounds like a Doctor Who book. Doctor Who. Doctor Who. <laughs> Horn here's a Zeus. <laughs> there is a uh, there is a moment though when it's like this thing could be a puppet, but no. Did you hear no. about the new female Dr. Seuss character? A Muppet. No,
How do you feel about that? The female Doctor Who? Yeah. Um, I don't have an opinion on it because I don't watch Doctor Who. I yeah. know there are some people that think it's like non, like it doesn't make sense with the story and it doesn't actually mm. like, it's like wrong for the story. Yes. Not the sense that it's a woman, which I, again, have no opinion on because I've never watched any Doctor Who. I don't know the storyline at all, but I'm always happy to see more women and stuff. So. Yeah, me too. Me too. And I was surprised. At first, I was watching all the people reacting to the backlash, and I think I've talked about this on the podcast before, but I feel like now I'm like two layers deep where yeah. I never see the initial offense. I only see everyone on my feed outraged by At the outrage. Offense? Yeah. yeah, we're in that phase now. And in, 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 this, in this one too, it's like I really – I did try to go to look for people who were mad about there being a female doctor. And I couldn't, I couldn't find it, but I could easily find one people. of the old doctors was annoyed about it. Um, I'm really? Someone yeah, I think he was. Upset he upset about it. Who's upset about it? I don't know if I should call them out. Who? Ellie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was just texted her to come talk about it if she's here. Okay, no, I don't she, think she's here because she. I was very surprised big, that Ellie's upset about it. She's a big Doctor Who fan, and I think that like it's non-canonical, or like uh, there was some type of thing where it's like it wouldn't make sense within the plot to have a female Doctor based I, on like the way they. Regener I don't know anything about Doctor Who regenerate or like when spawn. They, when what they is die it? or like the body is too damaged, they just generate a new body. Okay. Well, they've already and broken that's rules. How they've recast the uh, same role. Because Doctor Who is only supposed to be able to regenerate 13 times, to my knowledge. I could be getting this wrong too. But then they were like, nah. He can I go think more. on one of them they like forced him to regenerate as like a punishment. I don't remember. Hmm. Where's well, uh, where's our resident Doctor Who expert? Brand she's, uh, she's at the gym, I think. Brandon. Does <laughs> no, Ashley uh, know a lot I, I, I texted Ashley too to see if Ashley come tell us about uh, this too. I'd like to quickly praise myself, by the way. <laughs> Jim Hems Jim Henson said the name Muppet came from combining the words puppet and marionette, but he also said that he just liked the way the word sounded. There is no defined difference between a Muppet and a puppet, oh, so really? other than the link to Jim Henson. Uh -huh. So it's just Jim Henson now. It's true. The Henson family. There you go, Jim. nailed it. So That's and cool. then Kermit's one of the Muppets. Yes. And they Kermit just uh, fired the voice <gasps> of Kermit. You didn't know this? He got fired? I just thought I knew he wasn't doing it anymore. What are you fired? Uh, maybe I'm using the word fired uh, inappropriately. They just said they were recasting his role. Mm. We, that's fired. Yeah. That guy can't do it anymore. Yeah. And he's very, he's devastated. Uh -huh. Maybe they didn't renew a contract. Maybe there's some like nuance here that wouldn't define it as being fired. But like he it's... wanted to continue doing it. And now somebody else is doing it instead. And it's going to be a female. And everyone's going to lose. <laughs> be a female I feel like there's a lot of people who could do Kermit's voice pretty spot on. Can you? No, I Kermit. can't. Can you? Uh, You're good at impressions. Kermit the Frog here. See, like, that's, that's, that's great. That would, that would totally fool me. Do you know a voice that fucking nobody can do that I've ever met? Jean? Donald Duck. Oh. Well, everyone does that voice. Let me hear your Donald Duck I can't voice. do it. I mean, everyone, I mean, everyone besides me. Right. Can you do it? No. Can I'm you okay. do it? Give it your best shot. I want you to give me your absolute best. <laughs> yeah, I can do a match. That's mat. what it sounds like. I can <laughs> do a match. <laughs> but can you say like? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't do that. I can't. It sounds like, like you were in like horrifying. a radio that had that static <laughs> that on it. Terrible. <laughs> we, uh, Lindsay and I, just were at Florida Supercon, and we actually did a panel with some other voice actors. Um, it was the guy who plays Steven Universe in Steven Universe. Don't know what that is, but what? it sounds great. <laughs> the cartoon uh, cartoon Steven Universe. Oh, I assumed it was I've a never cartoon seen it, but character. I know it's you know like super popular. Actor. It's very progressive. And, and then, it would uh, suck to be a real actor and have a voice actor that voices right. you. That would kind of suck. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, and then. <laughs> the cartoon up. character. And then uh, uh, the guy who plays Freddy in Five Nights at Freddy. Which I, I don't know that video game. I didn't even know he had lines. He has a who voice? Freddy? Or like the, it's like some character. Does he play? He must play the guy in the answering machine. That's like the only guy I know that talks. Yeah, as far as I know. Of I course, I didn't play it past two Maybe or three. Maybe I have that. that Ashley, you want to jump in here and talk to us about Doctor Who? Sure. Okay. Doctor We were talking about the controversy surrounding the controversy <laughs> of the Doctor now coming back as a woman. The other Doctor... You, mean the non you, you, you can pop the over here. The other Doctor was mad because uh, boys lost a role model. Oh, fuck oh, off. Oh, fuck Jesus. Off. Like, oh, my gosh. like a female can't be a role model for a, for a boy. Yeah, Fucking I know. Stupid. And like there's not enough to choose from. Well, that's it. Uh... Ashley, so what tell us tell us what we should know. Strapping, what, what do you want to know? What is canonically, <laughs> what is the problem with there being a female doctor? Um, there it depends on which sort of part of the canon you're looking at. There never has been, but there have been female time lords. Right. So there's been like time lords and like time ladies, but they've also had time lords. Time ladies. Wasn't there some someone specifically in the show who was uh, reincarnated just recently as a female and that was a specific plot point. Yeah, so the uh, the master which is the doctor is sort of nemesis 
uh, uh, regenerated into a female, and it was uh, Missy, who's been a big character the last couple seasons, and by the way, is amazing. And so that was really kind of setting up for this to happen, for them to get the audience used to the idea that Time Lords can change gender. But it's actually been hinted at for ages, like in the 80s, one of the like uh, like original uh, writers or creators on the series was like, it could happen. It'd be nice if it happened one day in the future. And this is the future. Well, if there's a character that's ever going to become or be recast as a female, this character to me makes sense because the character regenerates all the time. If we're now 13th Doctor, is that correct? Yeah. So now if we're 13, just by sheer probability, mm -hmm. we should have had six to seven females at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's also a time gap between certain Doctors where... They've clearly been gone a long time, and they could have regenerated several times the time in the time between. A lot of gaps between when they I produced mean, that show, too. They completely regenerate all their cells to the point where, like, their hair and age and eye color and voice is different. So it makes sense that, you know, you might not have a knob when you do it. Or a chromosome, yeah, it would be different. Has it ever gone the other way, though? Has, has a female character ever been recast as a male? Mm. Ever seen that? Oh, wow. Like, there's a female Thor. Which everyone went nuts about the female Thor, too. At one point, Thor was a goat, like a space billy goat, being Beta Ray Bill. Oh, like, fuck yeah. Yeah, when they <laughs> took it over. And uh, so, but I can't, I can't think of a time. When's the time when a female character was recast as male? Has that happened? I mean, like Barbara was saying, there's know. not that many. I assume it'd have to be sci fi for it to make sense. Which yeah. is the thing, that's what this all comes back to one. for me. I feel like of all the types of fans who get pissed about this, sci-fi fans would have been the last people I would have pegged to be upset about like some progressive, changing it up, let's look at this in a different way type thing. I didn't like, see, really? I didn't see much controversy though. Did you, Ashley, did you see much controversy right now, or did you see the people responding to this controversy? So first I saw the people responding to it, but then if you look at any of their actual official announcements, it's just filled with vitriol. It's so weird. Like, of all of the characters to be upset about, like, being a woman for a little while, it makes perfect sense for the Doctor. We're talking about a time-traveling alien with two hearts that changes all the time and has been wondering why they weren't a lady in the past. Right. Matt Smith regeneration. He checked himself. He thought I was he thought I was a woman because of, of, he, like, checked hair and was disappointed he wasn't a woman or a ginger and, like, was, like, checking all here. Being like, nope, that again. still a dude. Yeah, I'm that was for at, you, Barbara. I'm looking at Twitter. A lot of people saying, "Yeah, it's been confirmed in the show that it's possible for a Time Lord to swap gender." <laughs> and a few people saying, uh, "I know a few people that are very upset about the woman be or the Doctor being a woman, but those people are always mad about something." I feel like that's a lot of the internet. Everybody just wants to be mad. Didn't about you something. post that Vine or that video of that? Um, oh yeah. What's his oh, name? Oh shit. Okay. Um, uh, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Pro DZ. There's a there's a guy who's a, a voice actor and, and YouTube personality. He was like huge his on Asian Vine. guy. Yeah, he's this, he's this Asian dude. And uh, I got I got I'm gonna look up his name real quick. He's really funny. He's oh, uh, you know about the guy hysterical. who does the the RPG stuff? Yeah, uh, Archibald. He's got the great yeah, yeah, yeah. voice. Yeah, uh, Sungwon Cho Sung or Pro ZD. Yeah, uh, yeah, Sungwon. Dude's fucking hilarious. Why do, I, you know, it's funny you say it because I was just watching videos from him. Have you ever thought about approaching him? Okay, there yes. he is. Yes. Because <laughs> it's like somebody like that, he's such a good voice actor. Yeah. It's the, the stuff that he does. You have to go watch his videos to get it. But especially if you love like JRPGs mm -hmm. and tropes in that, yeah. he does so many great videos around that stuff. He has a fantastic video that he put out recently about um, when you're watching a series for the first time with a friend and they really cling to a character that you know is going to die later and how you react to that. Um, yeah, no, check it out. Sung Wong, Pro ZD. Very uh, funny guy. Yeah, I'm bummed that I haven't run into him at a con yet, because he seems like a very cool dude. The Does Dragon he know Richard King Teeth at all? His yeah. we, we follow each other, we tweet and like and go, hee hee hee. Oh, tell him to visit. <laughs> yeah, it's real cute. <laughs> he's a funny, he's a funny, funny dude. So, uh, without telling any spoilers, you guys all see Game of Thrones last night? No! You didn't see it? Bah, bah, bah. Well, I got, yeah. I got home at 2.30 in the morning last night from... That's no excuse not to watch it, but I totally agree with that. <laughs> no, fuck be, you. You know you're gonna be on the podcast today, too. I, I, yeah, Bung I know. it out, as Gavin would say. But we don't tend to spoil shows the day after they come out, anyway. No, but, I mean, you're gonna walk into this room and, and hear about it. Oh, speaking of which, let's call out the fucking podcast crew for a second. Ashley, uh -oh. you wanna get back uh -oh. up here so you can weigh in oh, on this? Jesus. Okay, so, there was a discussion that took place on this stage. I'm very disappointed in all of you about. We should put the entire crew on the... Huddle <laughs> <laughs> crew. So, we, after the Grey Worm episode, <laughs> no. this is, this is a couple of, uh, this is a couple of weeks ago now. And Grey Worm, and what's the name of the character uh, who's uh, Daenerys's- Miss What's that name? Miss Sande. Oh, the pretty girl? Uh, yes, so, so pretty. Yeah. Which so one? Pretty. 
Oh, great, great Worms, good looking dude. They had a sex scene together. Did you see oh, that? I bully me. I saw that. But there was the question oh, wow, as to wow. what's going on downstairs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, Which, what's I don't understand answer? how that's a question. Um, I think he's got no penis. Okay. Miles? Yeah, I thought that uh, they mutilated all his genitals and stuff. And it's all just it's all just not even there. He's specifically it described as a eunuch and the army of un unsullied are eunuchs, right? And then Ben Correct. was saying that in the Game of Thrones, pop, pop, pop on there. In the Game of Thrones <laughs> wiki, in the lore, eunuch means what? Okay, so this all started with Mariel asking if if Grey Worm has a penis. Right. Yes. Uh, we looked it up. Which, eunuchs, it's not Mariel's business, by the way, but go ahead. Yeah, you know. <laughs> eunuchs, uh, from what we found out, don't have a shaft or balls. But with in the Game of Thrones wiki, there's like some discussion that it's different for like in the books or the TV show. It's a whole like thing that she threw us So down. there's no like, actual there's, definition. There's of a chance. That he still has a shaft, just not the balls. Yes. But in earlier episodes, the Unsullied was seen just cuddling with whores. Yeah. Yes. What do you need, so we, we you think need... they don't got nothing. I just think that they grabbed everything and just went... Yeah. I, like, I would just, assume it's all just, gone. Just, just, just I would a... assume it's all gone, too. So, okay. Varys is all gone. But still, a person would crave physical contact, so it's a nice, intimate <laughs> scene they have together. Know where this, is going. this is where the podcast crew just revealed something? something about themselves. And we are is, ashamed. They did not understand why... Why Grey Worm went down on her? They I just. I want to point out. I they point out. <laughs> can I say? Can I say the number of fingers that just went up behind him? Uh, mm? <laughs> well, said, actually, Ariel said most, and I was on her side from the start. So I just want to point that so out. What, so ladies, what? Ben, hey, Ben, the, ladies. Hey Ben, Ben helps set it always open. He knows. We've taught him well. M what, most oh, and of the then people speaking of Mariel. Mariel, oh, hey, what's <laughs> up? Mariel, get on that mic. Mariel, you got to jump in. Get on the side <laughs> We need to upgrade Bring this to start a side Mary, over here. Tell me what they told you. On oh, God. Okay. With this great room discussion. <laughs> Shit. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Fuck you. I don't even know how it came up. I, I, I <laughs> Grey Worm? You were asking about Grey Worm. Right. If he had a dick. Right. And if he had balls or no balls. But, but or, were, we, were we just talking about the episode? Didn't they well, express we disbelief the... that he went down on her? That's where we got. That's All where right. Go. All right. Huh? Shut up. Shut up. So. <laughs> We're sitting on that couch. It's a beautiful day. Um, <laughs> a day much like today. A day much like today. Um, and so we're talking about the latest episode, and I was like, "Hold on, does he or not? Does he not have a dick?" Because I had read on the Game of Thrones wiki that he didn't have a dick. I mean, no, 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 sorry, that he did have a dick. He didn't have any balls. No balls. Yeah. Um, and so. Yeah. What's that? Well, yeah, you and I were debating. Yeah, and so yeah. like I had seen it the night before, and then we were talking about it, and I was like, "Yeah." Um, I don't I was like maybe he has a dick. I'm not sure so then I was like I'm gonna ask Twitter and see what Twitter thinks and then these motherfuckers were like uh, the, Well, if he had a dick like why would he go down on her? Why would he spend so much time going down on her? And I was like, well, <laughs> yeah, guys. I feel very bad for uh, any lady that might have been Did in our show not girlfriends? teach you anything? Do you have girlfriends? <laughs> I'm married. He's married. <laughs> which, which makes Wait, sense. Wait, Nick was it you? Oh, wow. Nick was it you? Nick was it you? It was Nick. Hold on. That poor. <laughs> My question was not about why he was doing it, but why we were so focused on that and we didn't see what he had going on. But why does I that matter? Peddling. We want to see mangled peen. Backpedaling. But no, 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 that's a completely different subject. But, 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 but she took it as, why would he bother doing that? So what you're that's saying what is the question you were posing was, why, didn't why did the it? director spend so much time showing him provide oral sex when no, we could have no, been no. seeing mutilated genitals? We could have seen both. Fairness. Mm. It's about I will, fairness. I will say this, to your defense, last night's episode, without any spoilers, they had uh, what I consider to be two major events in the Game of Thrones universe, and they both happened off screen. They both were left in a moment where something was going to happen, and it all happened off screen. And it's like, the, these are big moments, dude. We've been building mm. up to some of this stuff. Show mm. it the fuck on screen. Mm. Don't tell me what's gonna happen. Show me what's gonna happen. They definitely showed us with Grey Worm and his uh, girlfriend, though, because that was yeah. a pretty fucking nice graphic shot they had. Both yeah, of them yep. have very nice what? bodies. Dude, that was, that was pretty hot scene. I was pleased. Nice ass. Yeah. Solid. Nice ass. Oh, by the way, just that visual. Wouldn't I want to call, I wanna call it Ashley. This is going to ruin a loop. This is yeah, Bernie, you're calling everybody part. out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ashley right. got upset that the nudity in Game of Thrones last night was just the Jamie Lannister's butt. And I was super excited about Jamie that. Jamie Lannister's butt was yeah. on there? Yeah. I was, You'll see it. I was worried that the nudity might just be for Jamie Don't Lannister's butt. Don't double fist butt. microphones. That's too. <laughs> there was, no, there was more nudity. You're spoken for. In the next scene. <laughs> All right, down That's to one. <laughs> one mic, fine. <laughs> this isn't very Game of Thrones. Hey, do we want to talk about your 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 infidelity this week? Which one? I got tweets nonstop about Gavin. Were you there? 
You could have put a stop to it. What's this? Ashley's, you know, Ashley's, Ashley has the thing you point a camera at her. I guess all the rules are out the window. Like, she's making out with Barbara on the is extra that, life Is stream. that your term of making we out? Haven't, so I feel very We haven't, yeah, we say, haven't even on, talked dude. about it. We haven't even talked about it. We kissed. We gave a peck. Bernie, you can kiss Miles right now. You've kissed more dudes than women at this company. I don't know that I have. Kiss Carrie. I don't Everybody think kisses Carrie. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> He's gentle. I haven't soft. kissed Carrie. Uh, but th now she's licking Jeremy's face on the. To be the fair, she was licking icing. I Wait. didn't. We didn't really make contact with the face. There was too much icing. Yeah, right. How do you have leverage? And it was delicious. She did the lift. Got a little. Got a little taste of that Jeremy in there. Yeah. Go ahead. It tasted. <laughs> it tasted so hairy. <laughs> you did it. It was like two cheek licks, but then you went for beard, and that was that was commitment. That's because that there was a chunk of cake in the beard. <laughs> I kissed uh, I kissed Max Crumkey recently, and kissing dudes with facial hair is weird. Yeah, it is. That's got to be strange. I, like I don't I don't I don't think it's strange for a woman. Uh, it depends on how the, long the beard is, especially how long the mustache is. Because if the mustache is creeping into the lip part, you have to like like lift it, <laughs> find the lips. <laughs> Do you lift it with your lip? No, just with my fingers. No, you don't. You like, well, you like grab their face and like with thumbs push it up. Do some of this. Yeah, actually. you do not. You like you nurse, the, nurse no, the hair out of the way. Not. It's like I having, don't believe you. It's like you go in for a kiss with someone with a with a beard and you just go. Hold on, let me get my comb. The way you're describing it, it sounds like an uncircumcised <laughs> face. Is the way. <laughs> Your <laughs> your you hand motion. Like pull the skin ben, come, can you come here for a sec, Ben? Can you can I use you as just a quick? Uh, yeah, I'm not wicked, gonna. He's ben, so calm down, beard. Twitter. But no, just come here real quick. I just need to see your face. So Barbara, you're telling me. Can we just get a little? Yeah, just a bit like, you go in, you're like, oh, uh, you're so beautiful, and you just <laughs> do that, <laughs> and then go well, in. Is when that you what you say? Yeah. When you do it, I want to kiss Ben. Now when I see that, I always want to kiss. It's way more attractive. Thank you, Ben. Thank you I, guess, I guess you kind of go in it at like an angle. Like, go. <laughs> like up and under? Like, like under the mustache. All right, Barbara. I know this isn't always open, but I got to ask. Hey, wait. I've been fucking shit on for bringing up sex topics on what this are you podcast. Been fucking? All, oh. <laughs> wait, I'll just throw that aside. So, what is overall. I mean, actually, you can weigh in too if you want to break up. Uh, what is the percentage of people that. Going down is part of the standard routine. I mean, Muriel, she, she would say 100%, I'm sure. Um, she dates. I don't want to, uh, I guess I could be graphic because I'm usually graphic. Well, just to give me a percentage. I don't need it usually. 69. So that sounds like a low percentage, Barbara. <laughs> no, it's just in terms of like, I when I'm like in that moment, I'm like ready to go. Yeah? Like I don't want to waste time. Wetter than an otter's pocket. That's the one. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. I'm a fan of four players. So you're I don't you, like skipping you don't, that. You, you, do you not like it though? No, I like it. Yeah, for sure I like it. But, but your mentality just... is like, we could be fucking right now. Let's. Yes. I, 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 mm. ah, that's like, that's like skipping the, the previews before the movie. You want to see if you want to see that new James Bond? Daniel Craig's in It's it. probably, I, <laughs> I would say. I just want you to note the look on Ashley's face. She's I would like, say nope. it's, it's like 80%. 80% offer. Yeah. At the, or it, just do it. Or just do it. Yeah. 80%? I feel like you You're just... like a 95. No, I'm saying for other people. <laughs> for other people. I'm saying of like in your whole roster, like hey. me and hey, the- Bernie. Hey, way to set yeah. the example, Burns. And me and the uh, <laughs> two other guys you've slept with. <laughs> it's right? fun, It's fun to do that. Like, yeah. as far as like percentage of just that's part of the, I don't know, maybe a third? Maybe, maybe a third. Quarter? Not no, hot. No, 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 no. Bad. Bad. Had, look, I've had lazy boyfriends. Sad. <laughs> so sad. Where's the bottle opener for this? Oh, yeah, it's on the floor. On the floor. <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> so, apparently Ashley's been dating the podcast crew. <laughs> <laughs> See, I mean, I think part of it too, you want to go down on people, because it just adds to the fanfare. <laughs> hey, speaking of fanfare, I want to talk to you about a legendary sandwich. <laughs> Actually, it's more than a sandwich, it's a sub, and a damn good one at that. They're giant subs. Just got even more legendary because now you can order from Jersey Mike's online. Right now, when you order your sub online, Jersey Mike's will hook you up with 10% off. Jersey Mike's has piled their subs high with slice-to-order meats, cheeses, and fresh veggies. And they've been doing it that way since 1956. Though it will take you more than a minute to take down one of their giant subs, it won't take you any time at all to pick up one when you order it online. 
It's my new go-to move. I actually haven't done that, and I, I would absolutely do that. Any place that orders online. Now you can get 10% off when you order online at jerseymikes.com slash rtpodcast or use promo code rtpodcast on their app for 10% off. That's jerseymikes.com slash rtpodcast or promo code rtpodcast for 10% off if you use their app. Get in, get out, get eating. At Jersey Mike's. Get eating. Sorry. Be wow. a sub above. Wow, you didn't even know the tie-in would be so perfect. Perfect. Per- so listen, we we made we've <laughs> hey guys, talked about Jer- down. <laughs> we've tr- we've talked about Jersey Mike's in the past about going there and that fanfare joke that we made uh, that their tub or their sub in a tub that the- Matt was upset because they presented it with no fanfare. Yeah, his kids to this day. Bring it up every single time. Like Matt's disappointed. In something like, yeah, it should have had more fanfare. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's great. And I gotta say, like, I don't often. He's interact. our audience when we make a joke on the podcast. Who is Matt's His kids? kids? Like yeah. they can't let it go. They can't let it go. Yeah. Like honey doesn't spoil. Um, unfortunately, my kids. It's like if Teddy, especially, he watches the RTAAs more than anything else. Oh, there you go, Matt. What's <laughs> fanfare? There's in Matt tub. with his sub in a tub. So upset. They. Uh, <laughs> this was a couple of months ago, but they sent, or maybe over that two years ago or so. They sent in like little uh, what are those called? The things you blow in and it goes little party favors. Yeah, they what sent- are those called? Uh, Blowers. I would call them party kazoo's. The thing that I'd rolls wrong, out, but that's what I'd go. It with. rolls out. And it goes, it's funny that we don't know what those are called. Yeah. Are they like street? No. Not Anybody? Streamers. Anybody know what those are called? <laughs> party roll ups. No it's idea. Called party favors. But they yeah. sent no. those in a bag with a picture of Matt's RTAA character that said like <laughs> Jersey Mike's fanfare or something like that. That's yep. amazing. Party kazoo. Um, like, they must have a, a big fan that works at the company there. Speaking of which, we talk about language a lot. We don't know what these things are called that Barbara just mentioned. Someone pointed out something that I was actually pretty surprised by because I like the way language is based typically on early language is based on things that we did before like technology mm-hmm. and society and civilization came along. So some of our most basic language is from like basic human existence. Case in point, if you need food, you are what? Hungry. You're hungry. And if you need water, you are thirsty. If you have to go to the bathroom, you are what? Pooey. There's no word for that. Isn't that weird that there's no word like hungry or thirsty, but for having to go to the bathroom? Well, I think it's because those you're consuming something, the other thing you're expelling something. I guess so. But it's just like, but you would say, I need to go to the bathroom. Yeah, you have tired for when you need sleep. Yeah, if you say, do you you want to go and get dinner, you would say, yes, I need to eat food. You know, it just sounds weird. You would just say, I'm hungry. And I don't know why, I never thought about that before, but I thought it was a really interesting point that somebody made. So if you had to invent that word, I don't know. What would it be? Pissful. Pissful. I don't know. Mm. I'm full of piss. <laughs> I don't know. What would it, I mean, what would you use for it? Where, where does where does thirsty I'm come from? Where does hungry come yeah, from? Right? Hun- toily comes from hungry. I'm toily. Toily. Toil- oh, I like toily. I'm toily. <laughs> I'm you might so have to toily. start that word. I'm a bit toily. I'm a bit toily. I need to leave. I'm toily. This is gonna be the new selfie. <laughs> Let me do bones. <laughs> toily. People say bones. <laughs> bones. I'm toily. That was that was the thing that we did on fan, fan service. That oh, yeah. actually ended up taking off a little bit because of like Bethany and Gus. To this day, man, she was bones. She was bones. Nothing, shit. Nothing's gonna take off. Dude. I've heard a lot of people say uh, instead of so, they say soy. I'm what the f- soy thirsty. That's Have just, you never nope. heard this? Like called being obnoxious. Bethany is is. and Patrick and all those people do it all the time now. I stand by what I said. I'm just <laughs> kidding. I love Bethany and Patrick. Yeah, you just described two really annoying people. <laughs> <laughs> no. hey, this is why people think you're rude. <laughs> <laughs> I can't figure out what people think I'm mean. <laughs> I'm Joshin. Um, by the way. No, you're Gavin. <laughs> it's entirely possible. It's entirely possible. You might be fucked. You might have lost your bet. What? The bet you made with Ellie? I haven't lost Oh, the bet. about uh, the uh, American Airlines? You might be close. Mm-hmm. Here's why I haven't lost the bet. Uh, BA has premium economy, so you, I can only get upgraded into premium economy. I think you're on the upgrade list for on BA for business class at this point. Mm-hmm. I don't think I, I think am. you might be. I overheard a phone conversation. I really um, hope that I'm not because I don't want to lose eight grand to put Ellie in a bloody business class. Seat. But this is what I was thinking about, and oh, this is Christ. the kicker: if she gets you upgraded to business class, then you owe her a business class seat. What could happen is you just give her your seat and then put yourself back in coach to pay your bet. That's genius. Yes, but she then you're wins. but then you're coach yeah, then she just gets herself all of that. still wins. <laughs> or I never said which flight I'm putting her in business semantics. class. Semantics. I'm gonna put Ooh. her on a business class plane to somewhere she listen, doesn't want to go. Listen, that'll prove that you're really nice to people. <laughs> <laughs> I'll screw with you, but in luxury. <laughs> listen, I've worked with Ellie for about four, six months now. I can tell you, she's stubborn. 
Hmm. She will not take a single flight for the rest of the year just to make sure there's only one flight she takes that you can upgrade her on. And if it's not to uh, London, it'll be to like RTX Sydney or something like that. <laughs> ah, Bala. That was a stupid thing to say. Aww. You were caught in the moment, dude. I think you might be screwed. I think he was just so confident that it wasn't possible. Yeah, he was pretty confident. But Gavin just doesn't try. I'm pretty enough. sure you can only upgrade to the next class of service. You might, you'll get, I'd listen, she, if I'm in economy, she I can gets only go. shit done, Gavin. That mm -hmm. was the whole point of the conversation last time. She gets stuff done. Wow, she's, she's, she's a freak. With she's the fluff. Good. She, she goes in with the fluff. It's really not that hard. What? It's gotta be nice. Yeah. I, we went through this last week. It's not I'm not trying to be nice. I'm just not trying to be wasteful with time. It's, it, being nice will get you stuff that, that you don't even necessarily need sometimes. I think so it's like, because, I, yeah. I, I, I would say- Service uh, representatives are so used to people being rude and mean to them. I'm the never call. rude or mean on the no, phone. No, but, or it's just short with them. They're not used to people adding the fluff. I, I had my car towed not too long ago. And for, when your car gets towed, that sucks. You're pissed. Maybe it was your fault. Maybe it was some stupid fucking sign that you didn't see. But you're really angry about it because <laughs> now you gotta pay like both your fault, fucking two hundred dollars. <laughs> no, exactly. But it's like it's your fault, and then that makes you more mad because you're like, "Fuck, I'm fucking stupid. I'm the bastard that cost me two hundred dollars." Doesn't stupid? make you any less mad though. No, absolutely not. If anything, it may, may, might make you more mad. Yep. So then you get there. I remember the the, the first time I got my car towed. Um, I went to the towing location. It was like in the middle of fucking nowhere. It was impossible to find. I finally get there. I'm fuming mad. It's hot. And I get there and there's this just like small little box with a woman sitting behind bulletproof glass and burglar bars. And a little slit. And a little slit. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's there because people probably threaten her with violence constantly to get their car oh, back. Oh, gosh. Like you she, no one, no one that she interacts with that day as a customer or whatever is happy to see her. You can't take people's property, charge them to get it back, and expect to have good customer yeah, interaction. Yeah, that's gonna suck. <laughs> so, <laughs> as soon as I saw that person, all my anger went away, because I felt bad for them, and then I, I just dealt with it. And with the most recent time when that happened, I was, I tried to be very polite, and I said, thank you, ma'am, thank you very much, blah, blah, blah. When she got my car back, she says, hey, just so you know, um, the, uh, the, the marker that we use to write on your windows to mark them or whatever, you're gonna wanna use, I, I can't remember what she told me, I'm like, you're gonna wanna just wipe that off with like a dry something, something, something. If you try and go soap and water, it's just gonna smear. I normally don't tell people that, but you've been really nice to me today, so. Oh, wow. There you go. I went, oh, thanks. Sweet. All it takes is like a yes, ma'am, thank you, have a nice day. It's yeah. like, you, don't, you don't have to tell them your life story. I'm just, agreeing that you should always be nice and polite. Mm. Did you get your car back for free? No, I did not. Well, so I don't <laughs> but know, I don't know what the point of this story then. is. She didn't fuck you over further with the smearing marker. You two are the you know? worst. <laughs> listen, I get furious with tow truck. Uh, I listen. I just I realize they're enforcing traffic laws, but when there's something very offensive on a personal level, when someone takes your property away and you're not part of law enforcement, they're just mm. it's just like Skyrim though. You can only leave stuff in the barrels in your house. Yes. Otherwise, yes, it might so. be gone. You did leave your property out in the world, which in is the car, not your dude. property. It's a car. It despawned, yeah. man. It despawned. Yeah, it despawned. It timed <laughs> out. I said this on off topic, but um, there's something you're super. There's a couple different things about my car that are super embarrassing. But one that's embarrassing to me on a personal level um, is Larry from uh, Achievement Hunter. Mm -hmm. I came out one time. It was like after, I think after the podcast when it was late at night. And I got out there like 10 o'clock at night. And Larry's out there and had a flat tire. And I got super excited. I'm like a dad in, in Christmas Story because <laughs> I get to help him change the tire on his car. And uh, then. As is the case in this fucking parking lot in this in this campus, I got a nail in my tire for probably the fifth time since we've moved in here. I don't know what it is. Like people just like throw nuts and bolts and nails out into this fucking parking lot like a bunch of looney sticks. But my car <laughs> I said looney sticks. Like a bunch of looney sticks. <laughs> This, my car, because it's electric <laughs> and the so battery's weird. on the bottom, mm -hmm. there's a very specific place in which you can jack it up. And if you okay. jack it up an inch to the left or the right, you could potentially puncture huh. the batteries and according to what this guy said, do about $40,000 worth of damage to the car. Or probably set the fucking thing <laughs> so on you fire do a and a car's worth it. of damage to your car. Basically, yeah, you ruin <laughs> it. You, you have to pay for a car to fix your car. And uh, so as a result of that, when you get a Fucking flat tire in this car. <laughs> There's no spare in the car. There's no jack. You have to call a tow truck, like roadside service mm. for a flat tire. AAA? It's that's roadside service. Well, yeah. Tesla Tesla does. I'd say one good thing about Tesla in regards to that. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> is 
that nice lower third broadcast. Wow. They Where will, did that come from? They well, do have really great service, but the fact that I can't change the tire on my own, I just I'm standing there with a tow truck driver trying to pretend like I'm a real man sitting there talking to him about how to change a tire. Like I have to prove to him that I know how to fucking do it, and I just can't. Did you just I'm change his tire for him to prove it? Yeah. <laughs> when are you, you changing my tire? I slashed his tire and then changed. I got the tire. this. Yeah. So. So can they? Can anyone tow your car without any problem? I don't think so. See, that's the thing about it. I don't know if the people could tow it. Yeah. But there's also a, se a secret to electric cars, especially in a place like Austin, that I haven't really talked about because I don't want to ruin it. We got a good thing going. Yeah. And that is, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but in Austin, because Austin's a green city, every parking lot has electric spaces yeah, now. Yeah, fuck mm -hmm. those places. Right. But I can go in there all the time. I can always get spots in the front, you know, because I have an electric car. And so it's like I can just park in those. I've never once seen a car charging at that station. I don't charge my car at that station. <laughs> never <laughs> once. By the way, Is those free? charging stations, no. Those charging stations, are they're fucking miserable. They're like an outlet. I have to have a, in my house I had to have a, uh, like a dryer outlet. If you have an electric dryer, that massive plug. Yeah, yeah, it's about yeah. double the voltage of a standard outlet. If you use a standard outlet, it, every hour you charge it puts like three miles onto the car. So if you're charging when you're in the, in the grocery store, you're adding like a mile. Of charge to your car basically hmm. whereas with my dryer outlet I'm not sure how the math works, but I can add about 30 miles an hour So mm -hmm. if I charge a car for eight hours, I add 240 miles of range to the car I assume it's just it's way more amps too than a normal. Yeah, it's <laughs> two it's two breakers So yeah, I believe it in this fucking big conduit that runs around my house Because uh, it goes in like right there on the side of the garage. I got this big conduit I gotta paint that eventually, but I haven't done it so far so yeah, so that's why I never use it. It's like not even worth by the time you plug it in everything and Tesla does a dumb thing where their charger is different than everyone else's charger. So you have to have a fucking adapter. Yeah, what? Like iPhone like thing. yeah. It's like an iPhone. No, it's like it's the, the iPhone of cars. It's like the new iMac, yeah. Car of iPhone. Gotta have a dongle to I charge car. it. I car. The car of iPhone. Uh, um, I iPhone that's of right. cars. That's I feel like iPhone of cars. That's, it's not that's just, right, not right? Just with yeah. I had a cars with phones and everything. It's no longer like they're designing them in a way where you can't just fix the problem yourself if you know how to do it. You have to go and you have to get a specialist or a genius. It is a, true. Modern yeah, car, you yeah. open the hood, it's just a black box basically. Yeah. They cover the engine so you can't even get in there and do anything. How dangerous is a Tesla if you've messed with it? Like, could you electrocute yourself to death with what? Probably with a, car, with a normal car battery, you could really fuck some shit up. I guess electrocute is to death. <laughs> By default, is it? Yeah, you electrocute? can be electrocuted and not die. I don't think you can survive electrocution. Yeah, you can if it's really low. Can voltage. you survive execution? No, but those are two different words, Gavin. They yeah. just have they to sound similar. <laughs> I don't know. Does electrocution mean death by electricity? Well, if you got, if you got hit so. by a lightning. Go strike. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> One lightning, please. A lightning. A lightning. <laughs> lightning. Between. If, if you were struck by lightning, isn't, aren't you electrocuted? Right, but I think you can be electrocuted to death. I think you get an electric shock. You're shocked. You're shocked. You're not, I think shocked is up until the point you die, and that's electrocution. Yeah, no, you can you can hit up, you can touch a hot wire and go, ah, fuck, I just Here, electrocuted. I'll look it up. Shit. Does electrocution In America, you mean certainly death? can. <laughs> I don't know if it does. Oh, I can point out something. I had a tweet that went kind of viral this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Like congratulations, 50, oh. dude. Dude, so great. <laughs> <About your> <laughs> so I'm, I'm riding high. Uh, it got like 50,000 likes, which I think is the most likes Ooh. any tweet has ever More gotten. More than your Joe the Cat video? Yeah, defeated. So my top two tweets defeated. on Twitter now, Based on those metrics, are I hate my kids and I hate my cat. So <laughs> that's it. Really tells a great story about me. But it's actually Larry, who I'm talking about from Achievement Hunter. He has the most viral thing any of us yes. have ever put on social media. He's got something that's got like 450 thousand retweets. It's beautiful. What? Yeah. What is it? It's uh. It, he, remember the chicken nuggets guy? Yeah. yeah. He's like, how many retweets nugs. to get it? And Chick Fil A said 18 million. Wendy's. 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 Thank you. He, uh, I love that I botched their fucking viral marketing. <laughs> um, he did that for uh, Donald Trump. Here it is. He asked Donald Trump how many retweets to join the Paris to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement, and uh, he just he faked it. I guess that tr Trump told him 18 million, yes. so everyone started retweeting it. Oh it upsets God! Me that so many people that's a clever. A I thought that, that was real, that and was then B were like, great "You guys just spread more fake news." It's like. Are you an idiot? Holy this is a shit. joke. Yeah. yeah, it has it has four hundred and five thousand yeah. retweets so and one hundred and fifty seven thousand likes. Yeah, Shit's it, has, funny, it has four times the retweets that it does likes. Holy, that's great. Fuck. Larry wins social media. Get fucked, everyone else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't even come close to that. I mean, that's also a that. great Photoshop too. It's very good. Does electric electric? He puts in he puts in the time for that stuff. Like he's his Splatoon two. 
uh, post. Which, by like the way, a, isn't why isn't it called Splatoon? Man, wow, hey, Gavin, we've been there. We've talked about it, dude. This is a moment of triumph for oh, you. Sorry. No way. Electrocution is death caused by electric shock. What? Electric current passing through the body. Hot damn. The word is derived from Ex electro and execution. Is it really? Oh, yes. Wow. Damn. Great. But it is that also so used for sense. accidental death. So that's where the word comes from. Get dunked on me. That happens all the time. <laughs> How does he know this stuff? How does he know that I'm stuff? I'm sure it's come up in conversation and mm -hmm. I've been confused about it in the past and looked it up. Looked that's it usually up. how it works. And just, like, actually pretty smart. It away. I'm what? not like admitting that publicly, but he's actually pretty smart. Yeah, but he, it's like he he didn't know that and just kind of worked it out, you know? Smart. <laughs> I'm gonna cling to my Muppet victory. I'll take that. And <laughs> I was always I was always confused that strangle, like I was strangled. I always thought that meant to death, but it doesn't. Mm. That like is like you can be strangled and live. Versus strang strangulation you, versus choking are two different things. Like strangulation well, you can, is the act. can also and survive then... choking. I don't think you, I think choking though is specifically like something's in your airway. Yeah, you but can't you can say live like I choked that. on that. Yeah, but like you can still say I choked the guy. Like I choked That's, on you're dick. not choking someone. You're strangling. Them. <laughs> I feel hey, like Barbara, could you not take more... it to a sexy place, please? What are you choking? <laughs> Over there? I said choked on dick. <laughs> yeah, I feel you, like you can choke, choke on dick. Choke on my dick, bitch. Technically, that would be someone choking you. <laughs> that would be the case where a person chokes. Choking you. is either no, sexual or it's like with the force. What else do you hear? Like so, Barbara, come and let's loop back around to this. So you said you don't often have guys go down on you because you're ready to go, but do you find that you more often go down on guys? Yes. Yeah, right? 100%. You don't find that's imbalanced? I enjoy it. Life's okay. unfair, man. <laughs> I get it. I'm fucking giggly over there. <laughs> Listen, man. Doctor Who. <laughs> so, but wait, it, you say it, it like stops people from going down there because you're so ready. No, uh... <laughs> you like you like wave them off. No, give them the yep, red card. No, Say not like necessarily. no. Well, I'm impatient. Mm. <laughs> You're impatient. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's just around the topic. What do you consider foreplay? What's the line of foreplay? Like, when does sex begin? When you penetration. Penetration yeah. is sex, right? But then it's like, well, if if two women have sex, if there's no penetration, oh uh, yeah, is it yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, for me, I would for myself, I'd consider it penetration, with a D. Yeah. Yes. So when you so not an F. when you start the clock on how long you're having sex with somebody, like people go, yeah, we had sex for five hours. Like when does the clock the clock starts at penetration? Yes. So people having five hours of penetration. Like when I they mean, say no, that, uh, uh, whoever's having five hours of sex, I do not envy you because that sounds uh, painful. Yeah, burn yeah. a lot of cows. After like an hour, Some everyone's just fucking you need to call like raw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> an hour. <laughs> but the clock does not start at oral sex. That's There's also some people who count it as like, oh, we had sex for five hours. Like you had sex, he ejaculated, took a, a few minutes break, and then did it again. Like that. As or one or maybe thing. twenty minutes. You know, what's mm -hmm. not whatever it is. Whatever you're not make assumptions here. Come on. <laughs> I'm period. just imagine you have like a chess clock like on your nightstand. Yeah. And time. <laughs> <laughs> you never check the time, ever. Uh, I'm sure I have at some point. So are you like seeing the the second hand come around? You like got to make it. No, no, no. Slow down. <laughs> you never, just gotta slow down. You've never done that out of curiosity. You're like, all right. I think with like a particularly long session. What fucking time is it? Nice. Yeah, there you go. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. I leave my fucking Fitbit on sometimes. Just for <laughs> have you ever gotten ten thousand steps? The metrics. Yeah, gives you a little reward right in the middle. That's great. <laughs> you get a step for a thrust. Uh, I don't know what the actual what metric about for is. A <laughs> Jesus. He strokes the hardest for, for, for a stroke. <laughs> uh, because if you cheating. leave, if, leave if you wait, if you leave your Fitbit on and you uh, jerk off, does it count? Like, I, I guess if you first of all, I wear it on my left hand. So That's unless I want to pretend like it's a stranger, <laughs> I don't use this hand typically. I thought the strangers. All right. Well, thanks, camera hand. too. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, is well, it counting it? It is. So yeah, now I just <laughs> idiots. <laughs> Y'all all look dumb. I'm gonna have the highest step count. <laughs> Although it looks like you're jerking someone else off right now. Well, yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah, yeah. Where did I let that? Peter Hayes just went out point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know you're watching, Pete. You're welcome. Here comes your gif on Twitter. I still don't know how to make gifts. I don't know how he does it so fast and so like you just, instantaneously like, with this. I think I've show. done it from a YouTube video with a website. We just put the URL. Yeah, in if you take out. out www off of the like a YouTube link mm -hmm. and take the period out, if like basically just gif YouTube dot com slash whatever the URLs. Yeah, it takes you to a page where you can make gifts off that. It's YouTube still video. way too much effort. No, 
it's super easy. You just drag yeah. where you want it, and you could add nah. text and all that shit. Nah. Yeah, it's great. Nah. I, I'm getting increasingly frustrated by how difficult my iPhone makes simple things to do that I should be able to do, like cut and paste. Yeah, but or save an image. It's like, but you don't. You never use force push. Or force I, push. I even even after you showed even me the choke? force push thing. <laughs> there you go. Even after you nice. showed me the force push, then uh, it, it it still doesn't work great for me. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I had to work that one out. Sorry, buddy. We had Rudy's for uh uh like podcast dinner tonight. Oh, did we? That's right there. Oh, I, got, I got I got a inch yeah. of brisket. There was nothing left by the time I went there. Mm. Yeah, but I have been eating for some reason. It's like barbecue keeps showing up because uh, <laughs> the Sugar Pine Seven guys uh, came in town and they wanted to go to barbecue after we had already made reservations somewhere else. They mm. were like last minute they want to go to barbecue. And I'm like, oh, we'll go do that. And then. Uh, Somebody else like no came in town, and then I had a. I've been doing a thing lately where I've been having people to my house in traditional land party style to play because my kids have computers and we're all set up in like this this ring, um, and they they come over and play battlegrounds like in land pa party format. And la last night, uh, you guys know Aaron and Eric, two of our old friends. They uh, yep. they came over and we did that. And uh, God, that was a fucking nightmare. I have to say, why you, you train me up on uh, battlegrounds? Yeah, you, I saw you've been playing. You got hooked, didn't you? Oh yeah. Oh, that Aaron and Eric. Yeah. Thinking. Aaron Morgan and Eric Vespi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they uh, came over. You Aaron... said here Aaron and Kayla, or Kayla came too, but she came later. She, okay. She came just to watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Aaron is a longtime member. He's a moderator. Uh, he, and admin. Yeah, Flash. Yeah, Flash two thousand. One of the like longtime members of the one side. One of the Destiny for crew. Yeah. It, it, listen, honestly. Very responsible for a number of different people who have come to work at the company. Yep. And as a result of that, responsible for some really big productions. Like, uh, I met Jack Patillo through Aaron Morgan. Mm -hmm. uh, I met is Daniel Fabello. Is that why you don't like Aaron okay. as much anymore? What's that? What? <laughs> yeah, after the Daniel Fabello thing, it really went downhill a little bit. But yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. Uh, and I actually I give full credit. Uh, Aaron is probably, and Eric are probably the main reason why uh, Elijah Wood was in uh, Red vs. Blue oh, wow. as well. I think they introduced yeah. him to it. So. Yeah, that, that's how I met him, was through those two. So, all right, let me read this. That's a Gus segue. Uh, we also want to thank our third sponsor for tonight's Rishi's podcast, Me Undays. Me Undays. <laughs> <laughs> Next Sunday or this Sunday? Me Undays. Man, Me Undays. Me Undies. <laughs> you want to look good in your underwear and be comfortable, right, Barbara? You know you want to look good in your underwear and be comfortable. Or out of them. But that perfect balance is hard to find. Don't sacrifice style or comfort. Check out Me Undies. August is National Underwear Month, and to celebrate, Me Undies is making it easier than ever to try the world's most comfortable underwear by giving you a risk free guarantee. All National Underwear Month long. If you don't love your Me Undies, they are free. Me Undies are made from Lenzig Micro Modal, a sustainably sourced, naturally soft fabric that's proven to be three times softer than cotton. Micro Modal is an all natural, breathable, eco friendly fabric extruded from Austrian beech trees that actually inhibits odor. No stinky undies, just soft, cool, and cozy me undies. Me undies are the ultimate feel good undies for when you want to feel naked, but not actually be naked. Been there. And for the fellas, me undies diamond seamed pouch cradles your jewels and gives you <laughs> gives your stuff the support it needs without feeling too tight. All national underwear month long. You can feel them for yourself risk free. It's simple. If you don't love your me undies, they are free. Now until August 31st, get 20% off your first pair. <laughs> Plus free shipping at meundies.com slash rooster teeth. That's meundies.com slash rooster teeth. Meundies. Me meundies.com slash rooster teeth. Thank you, meundies, for being a very consistent sponsor of the Rooster podcast. Like we really it. appreciate you. My yeah. underwear collection has completely turned over to meundies only. I'm like on my I, way. I've packed recently to go to Florida and I packed a bunch of underwear and it's all meundies. See, that's not the case for me. Like when I read the Jersey Mike's ad, I said I tried it out because I know Gus has tried it out. And those things are like typically written for Gus because he does the reads. Mm -hmm. But we don't know when he's going to be here because Gus gets all the stuff. Gus, like anytime we get sample products or anything so we can talk intelligently about the products that sponsor our podcast, mm -hmm. Gus just fucking takes it all. He does. And then you I, get it for always open, I'm sure. Yeah. I and swoop in and get the scraps. Yeah, there's I, tons of underwear that comes in, though. You should totally snag a pair. I had a word with, uh, with Nadia and sales. And I was like, a word. Wow. Just one yeah, word. That's all like he ever gives. Nah. To him. More of like, uh, you told me once that like if you're on the podcast, you can get samples of stuff. And she was like, Yeah, yeah, anything you want. What do you want? And I I listed a thing. And she was like, Oh no, we can't get you that. <laughs> <laughs> was it a mattress or something? What was it? 
Well, I'm not going to talk about a sponsor that's not sponsoring this video. <laughs> oh, there we go. Look at you, Gav. Oh, Staying yeah, loyal to enough. our sponsor. She sponsored the Rishi podcast. Um, well, I'm sure you could get underwear. But, you know, coincidentally, uh, my cat may have pissed all over a mattress recently. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, Which cat? Columbo? So, ever since Dan, whenever Dan comes to stay. What's the rest of this story, Miles? What does Dan have to do with the cat pissing? Riled up the kitty. I'm going to say that Dan... Loves the cat a lot and gives it lots of pets, and now the cat is upset that that he's not receiving as much love as he was getting. I'm gonna say that Dan got too drunk one night and he actually peed on your mattress and blamed your cat. <laughs> <laughs> I like Barbara's <laughs> version way better. Uh, neither are correct. Just whenever he's been around, Smee, once Dan's gone, will just walk all over where where the bed smells like Dan. And then he will just unload buckets of piss into it while we're not paying attention. It sounds like he doesn't like Dan. <laughs> no. Or that he really likes Dan. Mm. Yeah, and every time Dan comes back, he's like, cat pissed on the bed again. And now we're at the point where the mattress is just gross. Just soaked my, in urine. Oh, my. And it's only for about a week after Dan's been. And then he goes back to the litter box and uses the litter box. Why don't you put a litter box on Dan's bed after he leaves? <laughs> I had a friend. I had a friend in it's, middle by school. By the way, that's totally Dan pissing in the mattress. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly <laughs> yeah, what yeah. it is. You think that's what it is, dude? Oh, it, I, I think it, he the cat the bed. stops when Dan leaves. Yeah, I think he wants the bed. What a coincidence! No, cats are 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 vengeful with their movements. Case in point. So I had I had a friend in middle school who, whenever the family would leave town, they learned that like they had a, they had someone come and take care of the cat and like check on the cat while they were gone. But the cat would go into everyone's bedroom and shit on their beds whenever they were gone because he didn't like them being gone. <laughs> yeah. So they, so the after, they learned that, once. after they learned that they would close all their doors. But there was one time where his older sister accidentally left her door just slightly ajar when they came back from Disney World oh. because her room was the only one the cat was able to get in. Just a mountain of cat shit oh. just on her bed. Oh. Cats are vengeful. Fuck. Yeah. They he said that also, she cried and it was the best day of his young childhood. <laughs> cats will also attempt to bury, no matter what, the surface. Like, the cat has tried to bury its piss by, like, just scrunching up the covers. It's clever. Like, is, is it clever? It? Is that yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it's not litter, but I'll still bury this Again, piss. Again, Dan. <laughs> Dan's like, oh, fuck. By the way, was there any special <laughs> thing that you did to get your cats to use the robot litter box? Because I got a robot litter box, and... It's stupidly expensive, and the cats are not going anywhere near this fucking thing. Isn't that uh, like everything you buy for Took your cat? away their old litter box and I, put litter and some of their old shit from the previous litter box in it, and then they immediately went and used that one. Explain robot litter box. It to is a Gavin's caveman. favorite word. It's an egg to a caveman. Oh no, no, no way, impossible. <laughs> I wouldn't want to. I'd be embarrassed. When, when did cavemen invent cats? I'd rather have the caveman <laughs> change my tire. <laughs> <laughs> so you've never dumped in the robot. Not yet, but it's only been there like four days. Where, where so. are they? Where do they do their poos? Well, the there's a litter box for like right next to it, so maybe yeah, I should just get rid of that. Scoop some of that and put it in the. New I one. did do that. Yeah. I added some and then take away the old one. Seed giblets in there. Seed oh. You love you know seeing get it poo. started. Poo. I don't know anybody who says poo the way Gavin says poo. It's poo. Poop. Oh, I watched an amazing video. Right. <laughs> um, That's a weird segue. <laughs> two girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and also, the cat, the cat is doing this thing. Meg used to have collect Beanie Babies. So there's a bucket, there's a box of Beanie Babies upstairs. Bucket. Once, shut up. <laughs> Once a night, the cat will get off our bed, walk all the way upstairs, select one Beanie Baby, <laughs> and come down with it in its mouth, and dump it at the foot of the bed, and then go back to sleep. That's and is awesome. it like a magical selection? He does it so consistently. We ne we have a, a nest camera looking at the beanie babies now. <laughs> really, it's incredible. Does he, not, does he spend time like picking through them and get he the has right a one? Little rummage, yeah. He'll like pour about and then he'll be like that one. Do you think he's he's like bringing a dead animal as a gift to you because cats yeah, do think, that? I think he wants us to like kill it. Or think <laughs> like he's, no, he's presenting you. They're teaching with you how to hunt. With yeah, because they think humans are stupid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's like I. He wants us to eat it. I dated someone who had a cat, and <laughs> that cat would always bring in dead rats and dead mice that it would I kill out I in the- I should be glad it's just Beanie Babies. In the yard. Remember we used to watch Game of Thrones outdoors, and Joe the cat came running through with oh, a still yes. alive yeah. no, mouse? No, we heard yes. him kill it, yeah. or like, killing it. It was screaming, the mouse was screaming, yeah. during like a really pivotal scene. I think it was during the Red Wedding. It might have been like one of those <laughs> episodes around there for sure, and it was just like, everyone was- I remember Aaron Zetch was really- Zetch? Zach. 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 <laughs> Aaron Zach was really uh, mortified by oh, yeah. particular that particular show. Trying to was, save the mouse. That was a tough car ride home. <laughs> was it? <laughs> yeah. Zach sounds so much better than Zetch. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> oh, so this video I was watching, right? This guy, he decided to make... You've probably seen it. Maybe. It's two, two years old. He tried to make a chicken sandwich from scratch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we oh, talked yeah. about that on the podcast. Oh, before. you did? 
I think so. I like really you made the bread and everything. You made the bread. And apparently you it made, wasn't made very salt. good. Yeah, he yeah. made salt from like ocean water. Cost him fifteen hundred dollars, and it took him like six months to grow all the stuff he needed. And then he just bites it at the end. He's like, "It's okay." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, oh, I just that. love the way mass production works. It's great. Oh, you put that thing about the crock pot. Crock pot yeah. That's I what totally agree. Into that stuff, it's like. I was blown away. I mean, there were cheaper ones too. There was like a, a crock pot is like thirty bucks, thirty yeah, it's forty like bucks. A, yeah, yeah. A slow cooker. And like, if you had to make that, oh fuck that! Yeah, yeah it's so complicated. Not. And I mean, you so... can make a basic one. I think it's just like you heat up ceramic. But even that, I couldn't do for thirty bucks. You should. There's a great uh, stand-up comedy routine that Joe Rogan does specifically about this, about how most people don't know how f anything mm -hmm. is fucking made. And it's like 1% of 1% of the population that can actually get stuff done. And if those people went away, just be like, everyone else would be like, I don't know. Yeah. He talks about these two guys with the apocalypse, the power goes out because all the smart people died. And like meeting outside, it's like, hey, what's up? It's like nothing. Let's go turn the power on. It's like, okay, I don't know how to do that. Do you know how to do it? It's like, no, I thought you knew how to do it. It's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. All right. Well, keep me updated. Yeah, keep me updated. <laughs> and then they both walk away with no fucking power. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly to... how that would go down. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, would you be able to walk into a power station and eventually figure it out? Fuck no. Because somewhere there's a button that does it. In the first draft I, I did of day five, back when it was going to be basically a feature length thing and not a uh, <clears throat> not a series, uh, the main character was a guy who worked the third shift at a power plant. And the whole purpose of that was he was able to explain why the power grid was able to maintain itself for five days. Why there were still street lights and traffic lights and things like that. Mm. Why those things were still on. And his character was able to describe that. He's also a guy who would be up, you know. Would you be able to write that without actually knowing how that works? I research. did. I researched it. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Because the power grid, you know, day five is a story where people just went to their homes one night. The world went to sleep and just didn't wake up the next day. That's right. essentially the way that worked. So what happens actually is the power grid goes way down at night. The usage is, is way, way down. And so the generators can run themselves. I talked to people at the, the power company at Peternalis Electrative Co-op. Those are people that I talked to. And uh, talked about how, yeah, with a lower, uh, you know, usage of the overall power grid, it yeah, could easily last for seven to ten days. That show comes back next week. Yeah. Oh, the shit. show comes oh, back next week. this week. Uh, August six, right? <laughs> what, yeah, but what August six. Yeah, it's on, the, it's on Sunday. It's, it's this Sunday. Sunday it will be on. Sunday it will be on. Month Sunday. Oh, there you go. No, it's not month Sunday. Uh, I'm really fucking excited. We saw the first episode of RTS. So good, right? Oh my god. Yep. Ridiculous. So good. Ridiculous. So good. I, really I still like, can't believe we make that. I like the cast of Day Five. Yes. They're a lot of fun to hang out with. I like the cast of Day Five too because they're like kind of like an encapsulated group at Rooster Teeth. And they're like they're like their own like little family, mm. and they always do stuff together, and they're always taking photos together. I don't know, it's really interesting. It's like a totally separate group within Rooster Teeth in a way, you yeah. know, in in the way that there's no other production like that. Maybe Crunch Time was kind of like that, but um, yeah, it's a family. It's family, a little family. Gab and I were in I think the same episode in season one. I think we. Oh had yeah, you were the dude that just went to bed in the in the morgue, right? In the morgue, yeah. Yeah. Died. Died <laughs> yeah. Man, they, there's some stuff in season two where they start to, you know, one of the things about. A sleep apocalypse is that sleep deprivation you quickly lose your mind that's mm -hmm. that's what happens you know is that you, you're you know before your body fails your mind fails rapidly so in a lot of apocalypses like Walking Dead there's all these characters who are just or you know Mad Max there's all these characters who are just crazy almost for the sake of being crazy but in day five it's so motivated that people just lose their fucking shit yeah. because they they can't sleep they're hallucinating and everything else and so uh, they really explore some of that stuff in season two there was already some weird stuff in season one but in season two there's people who are just like f off the fucking charts the production How? quality on that show alone is amazing yeah. I've, I've stayed up at night like I've done a just not slept and then gone to work and it sucks it's so awful. It's awful. Yeah. It's so unpleasant. It feels the like painful. That, the way time works, it doesn't make any sense. Well, that was me last night coming home at 2.30 in the morning wanting to watch Game of Thrones and I physically could not do it. I could not stay awake. But that's just being tired. The, the fact that it was like you have to get stuff done and you haven't slept in over a day. Oh, yeah. It makes time slow down. <laughs> yeah. Like I was yeah. waiting to leave work for like a month. <laughs> it felt like. And I was just waiting till like 4 p.m. or something. I get but. real bitchy if I'm tired. Yeah. I'm no fun to be when I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, when you're tired. I get real short. With <laughs> I get real short with everybody and just like whine about everything. What are those shoes? Type, like, nah, huh? on email. What are your shoes? <laughs> These are my Sonic the Hedgehog shoes that I bought from Japan that arrived today. Oh, oh they got Sonic love. shoes? Yeah, dog. Is that what Sonic wears? Oh, That's what look at that. Wears, look at that. Dog. They got the little, oh, yeah. 
He has my, a stripe on his shoes? He's got a little buckle awesome. he puts on there. That's how he goes so fast. Except in Sonic Adventure 2, he's wearing soaps, because product placement. Those will never not be cool. So if you were to run from there to right over there, you wouldn't even shot, see it. It'd be that Would fast. it be a blur? Yeah, it'd be nuts. It'd be a little blue blur. Oh, nice Black uh, blur. Uh, yeah. shoe shot over there? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Why, I think hello. we should see it. I think we should see you in action. At least I thought of a new game we could play, Barbara, which is instead of explaining this to a caveman, explain this to a good looking person in a bar. <laughs> like, how does, <laughs> how does Miles explain this? Oh, Sonic, this? The Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, no, these are, um, <laughs> these are actually a limited edition run from Japan. Uh, Tokyo, great city over there. Um, it's a uh, very high quality. No, you're very, a world um, traveler. <laughs> you're avoiding uh, video games at all costs. Uh, you know, it's, um, it's based off of a. Digital sort of. You lost me. You're digital, yeah, Barbara. I just watched your eyes glaze over. Right you there. lost me. Mm. Gone. Digital. Hey, mascot. you want to see a couple of amiibos like, I have back in my? There we go, buddy. There we like go. Instagram. That's like five of them. <laughs> One of them, Sanic. Sanic. Um, man, I we we were. It's been a minute. But we were talking about facial hair earlier. Yeah. Mine can't grow back fast enough. I had to shave last week for the episode of On the Spot that comes out this week. This week, yeah, that was supposed to come out last week. Yeah, yeah. Um and. Uh, Hey, the internet's me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so I'm so glad. I was talking about this with Kyle. I'm so glad I'm no longer a person with like cripplingly low self esteem because I was I was gonna be on Tuesday night game fight with Michael the next day and was like, oh, people haven't seen me without my beard. That, that's gonna be all they talk about. Like, oh, I'll post like a Twitter picture or something. Blah blah blah. And I know that like almost all of these were like said in jest. Yeah. But overwhelmingly, the response to a picture of me clean shaven was. Ew, this makes me uncomfortable. I was like, oh! They said ew! Cool. Oh yeah, people, yeah. I mean, Barbara, you should know more than anybody else, people have no problems yeah, commenting no. on yeah. physical appearance. Oh, it's mainly yeah. just because a woman. To be no, fair, no. I agree bad. and I don't like it one bit. <laughs> I look like Ted Mosby, and it's not a good look. I think it's just because they're just not used to it. That's uh, Like, do you guys have something that if you were to remove it from your physical appearance, that everybody would be weirded out and not happy uh, by it. I've changed my hair color once or twice over the last couple of years, and there's always people who have an opinion on what they think you need to look like. because oh, Because sure. we are essentially like cartoon characters. We are on these shows that people know us for a way we look, mm. and people draw us a certain way. Sure. And when you change something about that, it's like, you're not the same person, and you should mm. go back to what the way you used to look. I don't like change. And it's like, uh, normal people could dye their hair any color yeah. they want, and nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> You ever told it to somebody in real life, like someone you knew, when they did something, you're like, eh, pff, that's awful. Uh, Unless they're just like, I, I don't know how I feel about my new hair color. What do you think? Yeah. But even then, it's like, even then you're like, it looks advice. great. Have you ever gone, like, up in a video and gone, I'm not sure about this hair color. Let me know what you think. Have you, have you ever done that ever? No. It's completely unsolicited. Yeah. yeah. yeah listen, you know, comment boxes there. People have to comment on something. Yeah. That's but true. people typically, the reason why, you know, you don't have cripplingly low self-esteem, like you said, is because you've been through that process. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like after you after you read, you know, a hundred thousand like negative comments, it's just you're just like after a while you get a little numb to it. Which I I think sometimes it comes across as like that you don't care or you, you or you can't accept criticism, but it's actually the opposite. You learn how to like filter stuff and find out what the actual criticisms are. Yeah. The, the, criticism's not necessarily a negative thing. Criticism yeah. is yeah. You know, no, absolutely. Yeah. There's there's the comments, there's the negative comments that will still Stay with you because you know they're right. Yeah. Maybe they phrased it in a really like mean way, which that really upsets you. But at the end of the day, you're like, oh, they had a point though. And those are the ones that like hang with you. No, I think whenever whenever someone's negative comment lines up with a negative opinion you have of yourself, that's when it's like it it can hurt you. It you also I mean? sucks when like if someone makes a comment that you agree with, but the way that they said it was like very aggressive or like really rude, or really pointed. It sucks because it's like I. I want to agree with you, but you were such an asshole about it. Now I almost don't just to spite <laughs> you. It's that meme where it's like, you're not wrong. You're just an asshole. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, ugh. People will listen to you if you're not a huge dick about it. Right. Otherwise, your defenses immediately go but up. Also, and then you, it becomes an argument, not a discussion. I think people also um, confuse criticism with, um, what am I looking for? Like, just insulting. Mm. Or just like, no offense, but blah, blah, blah. It's like, if you have to start a sentence that way, it's probably not a good thing like, to say. Like, like, the, like Tyler Crow at the top of the show. Like the phrase, uh, you know, this isn't racist, but racist comment. Like, always right after that. Like, no one says, hey, I'm not racist, but I went shopping. I, I, <laughs> I can't, like, unless there's a reason Jesus. to say, unless there's a reason to say, that something's not racist. There's no reason to say it unless right. you're about yeah. to say something that's actually racist. Like I've right. seen comments, it's like, no offense to Barbara, but she's not funny. It's like, yeah. 
Yeah. That is offensive to me. That, yeah. That's I, I, if I were to try and if I were to try and no offense, but I'm tired. Take that comment <laughs> to make any sense, right? <laughs> if I were to try and take the comment that they were trying to make and somehow make like I guess it would be like, I like Barbara. Unfortunately, I don't enjoy her on the podcast. It's like the nicest way I think you could try and put that, which is like there's a better way. To, there's a better way to stay, say stuff like that. I think it was actually in a recent episode of Game of Thrones where I, someone said like. Hey, everything you say before the word "butt" is bullshit. Okay, yeah. just tell me what you're gonna say after the word "butt." Yeah, yeah. Hey, what was that from? What was that? I think it was in Game of Thrones. Was it in Game, Game of Thrones? Thrones? I think someone was. I think Tyr- Tyrion said it, right? Probably. Spoiler: Tyrion's still alive. Talk Tyrion talks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tyrion had some lines in this one, so I'm super excited about. Oh, fuck off, Ted Mosby. <laughs> Ted Mosby. NPH was way better. Everyone liked him better than I you. I also like how they talked about you looked like him without your beard, and they used a picture of you with your beard. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. This needs to come back faster. All right, reaching think... the end of the podcast. Any final thoughts? Anybody? Last thing to discuss? Nah. No offense, but I think we should end it now. No offense, but not to be racist, but the podcast is over. Yeah. Yeah. Anything? I had fun on it. it I had a good, good time, too. We had a post show coming up. Gavin and I had best the other day. Ooh. Yeah? After not hanging out for a while. Yeah. How'd that go? It was fun. Was yeah. it just the two of you, or did you go with the Just group? the two of us, yeah. Oh, really? That's nice. Where'd you guys go, if I may ask? We just uh, went to the east side. East side? Mm. East Austin. And we're going to do it again soon. Yeah. There's something i got to point out. Bev. If you ever want to feel like what Austin was like, you know people complain about a place that changes a lot, and Austin has arguably changed a lot, especially oh, yeah. since I've been here. And if you ever want to see what Austin's actually like, we never talk about this place to go to eat. We didn't feature it in the food vlog or anything. But there's a local chain here called Thundercloud Subs. Ever, Thunder ever been there? Cloud. Thundercloud Subs. Yeah, yeah. go get there. I've one. never been there. I only go to Jersey Mike's. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Good point, Gavin. But people, people who listen to podcasts can't go to Thundercloud Subs in like Ohio or anything like that. You can go to Jersey Mike's there. But Thundercloud is so, I love it, so shitty. They, I hate it. They what? probably haven't. Opened a new location in 20 years, and they certainly haven't renovated any of their existing locations in that time. So you can walk into one, and it's exactly like it was in 1998. It's exactly <laughs> the same as what Austin what's, used to be. What's like. the problem? There. The same no, I love, I love okay, it. Okay. I love it. Twice I've ordered a BLT with mustard, right? Twice I've got bacon and mustard. <laughs> That's not even it. Who has that in a sandwich? They they make the sandwich in, in front, front of you, of though. Did Literally you just in front let of you. that happen? I wouldn't. I didn't go there. I like gave the order to someone who went. So it sounds like whoever Meg sent fucked up. Whoever went there fucked it up. Because I know no. Meg, Meg loves here's, Thundercloud. Here's, here's how I can yeah. guess what happened. Whenever I go to she lunch with like, Meg, that's where we'd go. She was like, "You want anything from Thundercloud?" And I'd be like, oh, no. "BLT." And then I can I get bacon sandwich. Well, then she's probably <laughs> fucking it up. No, she's not. She always says BLT. Well, doesn't she watch them make it? You literally sit. Yeah. You stand there and watch them make it. She's, yeah, she's like five two. <laughs> 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 like the eyes over the counter. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like I was in one this last weekend with the kids. And I was like, yeah, this is just like I could it, this could have been 1998. I'm just sitting in here. It's the mm. same like hi- hippies behind the counter, the all the hand lettered signs. Somebody had repaired the drink cooler with like a wooden It's also knob. people who've been working there for 30 years. Yeah. 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 The employees don't seem too enthusiastic about the work they're doing. They're, they're, you say you'd want some fluff with that? I'd, I'd want there. the correct sandwich. <laughs> Which, I don't think that counts as fluff, to be honest. <laughs> I have to say, though, sandwich. that's old school Austin. Like, Austin, yeah. if you had to describe it in one word now, you'd probably use the word hipster. Mm. Yes. Whereas when I moved here, the word that you would use to describe Austin was slacker. Mm. And it was the huge slacker culture. Like the movie Slacker was shot here, Richard Linklater, you know, which is a big reason why we're in the studios we're in now, is because of that movie. And uh, yeah, the slacker culture was huge in Austin. Nobody gives a shit about anything. Amy's ice cream. And Thundercloud subs always had just the worst unenthusiastic <laughs> people working there. My my interaction with Amy's is super different. The first time I ever went to Amy's ice cream, they're like, "Do you want to see a trick?" I was like, "I didn't know this was part of the deal. I just have, wanted like, ice cream." Trivia or something there, like so they have like question trivia, of the day. But like they do like, I've been to three different locations, and each one completely unsolicited. They're like, and it was it was late at night, but they're like, "Hey, doing some like trick scoop stuff." Oh, like the, there was one where they could throw it across the street. And get yes, it. the yeah. one over near Waterloo Records. Yep. Yeah, yeah. that was awesome. I was like, tip, 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 tip. That was cool. But the person's wearing like a 15 year old t shirt oh, yeah, with sure. dreads and everything else. It's There's just nothing like, nothing wrong with t shirt. Now nah, I get you. But 15 years old. <laughs> Have you had that t shirt for 15 years? No. So paper thin, you can like see their nipples through it and all that. <laughs> We're uh, getting there. Not to be specific, but they will have dreads. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I mean, it's just like, like typical, like Austin, just like, yeah, you know, hippie. Yeah, hippie. 
Yeah. yeah, they're packy sacking on the break, that kind of thing. <laughs> packy sacking and smoking a doobie. And <laughs> that like, would be that's racist. racist. <laughs> Pack, oh yeah, that might be racist. Not and to be racist. No, they were hacky sacking. <laughs> not to be racist, but we should end the podcast. We yeah. should end the not to be racist. <laughs> but we should we should end the podcast and do the post show. All right, bye everybody. See Love you. Next week. you.